the grid now for the big endurance event of the afternoon, the Hang 10 400, and here once again is Adrian Ryan. We're only 10 seconds away from the start, or half a minute away from the start, and one that uh, I want you to watch at the start will be Jim Richards. Jim Richards in the Goss Falcon is on the second row of the grid. The big blue Falcon you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, and that's the car that should get away very, very quickly. Jim Richards is a magnificent driver, and uh, since he came to Australia from New Zealand, has won virtually everything there is to win in his, uh, to win in his very, very fast Mustang sports sedan. He's used to driving big cars. There's the flag up, and down it goes. The Hang 10 400 is on its way, and look at uh, Richard coming out in the big Falcon. He's rounded up Peter Brock already. He's right up here with uh, Colin Bond. There's uh, Bob Morris coming up behind them too, and it's Richard the leader as he slams through. Colin Bond in second spot, then um, would be uh, Bob Morris in third position, Peter Brock coming up on the inside hard, and there's uh, Alan Moffat back in seventh position at the moment. But look at the field streaming through as they go round. Car number four was Bruce Hindoff in last year's winning car. The rest of the field storming through uh, Tirana Corner, but out on the straight, there goes the flying Ford. Uh, Jim Richards from New Zealand driving the John Goss car. Bond in second spot, but he's being rapidly overhauled there by Bob Morris, who's coming up very quickly, and Peter Brock Brock, who's right up there. Brock is up into third position now as they race over the top of Marlborough Country and come flying down through the S's. Richards hunting the big car like he does his uh, Zip Chrome Mustang. Throwing it through Goodyear Corner now. Bond in second spot, then Brock, then Morris. Then the next one was Alan Grice, followed through then by um, Garth Wixton and behind him uh, Alan Moffat, then Charlie O'Brien. Bruce Hindoff is up there with them too and Wayne Nagus from Western Australia. It's a tremendous battle as they come round with one lap down and 129 laps to go. Three hours of racing ahead of them and look at them slipstreaming each other down the straight as the big Ford is roaring away. Here comes Richard down into the braking area now. This is where the big Ford really shines. He brakes hard, slams it across to the right hand, the left hand side and zooms down past the pits. He's got a good 50, uh, 20 or 30 metres lead over um, uh, Colin Bond in second spot in the Marlborough Holden dealer team car. Brock up on the outside and the Bill Patterson car tries to get through. Morris almost shuts the back of Brock's car and what a race between these three Tiranas. Evenly matched cars and very evenly matched drivers. Up from Tirana corner they go and through the kink on the right hander but the big falcon of Richards is just racing away with them. If he can build up a lead like this it means that he'll be able to get away with the race and uh, a a longer pit stop to put in more petrol, which he has to do. Over the top at Marlborough, here they come now, weaving down through the S's, down towards uh, Goodyear Corner. Into the left hander they go, brakes on hard, then power on as he slams the big Mustang to the big uh, Falcon round the corner. There's Grice in uh, fifth position, he's followed through by Garth Wixton, and there's Moffat sitting back, uh, playing a bit of a waiting game at the moment, but he's back in seventh position. Up to the Dunlop Bridge they come through the long shallow S's, and out onto the straight for the second time, it'll be two down and one 28 to go. Here's Moffat's car just flying out under the bridge now as uh, the uh, Jim Richards car racing away. He's got a good 100 metres now. He's got the breaking area of Shell Corner. In second spot we've um, got Colin Bond. Bond still up in second position. In third spot is Bobby Morris trying to get through on the inside. But uh, Morris is being hammered now by uh, Peter Brock. He's got through on Peter Brock and he's moved up to third spot. Brock's not going to have much of that I'd imagine. And he comes right up hard on the Ron Hudson car. Nearly clips the fence on the inside as he powers through to Rana Corner. And accelerates away up towards the right hand kick. And there they go. Uh, the Goss car driven by Jim Richards. The uh, Marlborough Holden dealer team car of Colin Bond in second spot. In third place from Sydney also would be um, uh, Bobby Morris. In fourth position Peter Brock. In fifth position would be Alan Grice. And in sixth position I would have it now as Garth Wixton. And in seventh position would be um, Alan Moffat. Great drive. Great drive from the start for uh, Jimmy Richards as he leads coming through the top court. He's got Colin Bond but Bond is under pressure already from Morris. Uh, Jim Richards absolutely shining. Got a beautiful start down the outside. Uh, cut into the turn to make sure that uh, he was well accommodated and let the others make their own arrangements. On the back straightaway uh, he managed to really open up distance on them and I think uh, the further the race goes uh, the further that you're going to see Jim Richards at least out accelerating the field down the straight. Some pressure here as uh, we've got uh, Bob Morris coming up and he's taken Colin Bond. This is not a good uh, a good thing for Bond and this Bond is prepared to sit back and play a waiting game all they're attacking this this huge race as though it were a sprint. 
the pace has certainly been on from the outset and uh, Jim Richards going away Bob Morris has come from behind up taken Colin Bond now moves to second Bond is in third then followed by Peter Brock great race good start to Jim Richards the flying Kiwi and could we see the second leg of the double coming up with Johnny Goss winning the Australian Grand Prix and his car winning the hang 10 with uh, Jimmy Richards at the wheel I it could well be on Jimmy Richard can build up a lead like he's doing now and get away from them. He'll almost have time to change over and uh, hand over to Gossie before the end of the race. But there's, um, coming up very quickly, is Bob Morris. Bob Morris has just flown down through the S's and he's right on the tail of the Falcon. He's going to really treat this as a sprint race and he's racing hard. Garth Wixton has uh, Alan Moffat now breathing right down his neck as they come through. There's Richards now holding a very slender lead. Morris is throwing the car sideways through the corners. He's right in the slipstream, dives out of the slipstream to try and catch um, uh, John, uh, Jim Richards unawares and down the straight they come. Look at him hanging in behind the big Falcon. The Falcon's got the edge in uh, performance down the straight but Morris might just do a desperate up on the inside. He's trying hard and here he comes. He's breaking very, very hard. Slams through on the inside and it's uh, now Bob Morris for the Ron Hodgson team. He's up in first place now with... Um, Richards trying to get through on the inside and can't do it, swaps to the outside. He's really trying to um, uh, harass uh, Bob Morris at this stage. Away they go, away from Durana Corner. The little, um, the smaller car of, uh, of Bob Morris is moving away a little bit. The big Falcon right on its tail. And there's uh, Colin Bond trying to a uh, passing move too as they came through and race away up the uh, long straight towards the Marlborough Bridge. In a moment we'll see them over the top of the Marlborough Bridge and they'll come racing down through those S's again towards Goodyear Corner and that's where Morris is exceptionally quick. Morris now moved up into second spot and uh, ahead of, um, of Jim Richards. Richards in uh, second spot followed through still by uh, Colin Bond, Peter Brock, then uh, Alan Grice the next one, then Garth Wixton and Moffat still battling it out further back in the field but uh, there's a long, long way to go. So the, lead, the cars at the moment are Bob Morris in car number 7, the L34 Tirana from New South Wales, headed by Ron Hodgson, is the leader. In second spot is uh, Jim Richards. Richards in second place, and there you can see um, it looks as though Richards car coming down here and pulling into the pits. We're just uh, trying to find out if, that's, if that is Richards car. And here comes Jim Richards into the pits and also, who uh, had just led the race and uh, looked in a solid position during the opening laps of the event but uh, was taken by Bob Morris and taken very very quickly from behind but on lap 20 we've got um, the positions as follows Bob Morris the leader still in car number 7 for the um, uh, Ron Hodgson team in Sydney car number 05 Peter Brock for uh, Bill Patterson Motors in Melbourne both in L34 Tiranas is second third position is car number 1 and that's uh, Colin Bond and the Marlborough Holden dealer team car of course current Australian touring car champion fourth position car number 20 is Garth Wigston from Tasmania uh, then we're not quite sure but we think uh, Warren Cullen might be up there in, um, in fifth position in car number 6 uh, with Alan Moffat just tucked in behind him Alan Moffat in car number 9 in seventh spot in eighth position uh, would be Blanchard in car number 16. In ninth position would be Charlie O'Brien from Queensland. In tenth position, Murray Carter. Murray, a very consistent driver and one who will probably be there at the finish very well up in the field. He takes the car just below its limit all the time. Doesn't stress it. Rarely does Murray Carter ever have an engine blow up. It's usually some unfortunate sort of thing like a flat tyre or somebody running into him uh, that puts him out of the race. Kelvin Goff, who yesterday rode off most of the uh, panel work on his car by hitting the fence down at Goodyear Corner, is in 11th position. In 12th position is John Pollard in car number 22. That's a good return too from Kelvin Goff because his car uh, really did uh, whack the fence yesterday. There's Peter Brock currently uh, in uh, second place and uh, running away a little from Colin Bond, although Bond appears to catch him up in the straightaway on the run down to the left-hander at Shell. Bob Morris, though, uh, well and truly out in front. There's uh, Peter Brock going up the back straightaway and uh, he is... Uh, uh, pulling uh, away, if anything, from Colin Bond at this point. But uh, Tirana's one, two and three and four at this stage as they go up through Marlborough Country and uh, now approach the S's and then the run onto the straight. 
Bob Morris uh, talking about drivers who might be extending themselves. He's just absolutely disappeared from the rest of the field. And uh, uh, I rather uh, query whether or not he can run at this pace for the full 400 kilometres. I was going to say that a moment ago, uh, Mike, they are running still at sprint pace. Now, this is the sort of pace that we're used to seeing here in 20 lap races. They've already done 22 laps. They've still got 108 to go. And the pace is really on. There's no doubt about it. The pace is on amongst the... Um, uh, the smaller cars too. There's Pollard who's lying in 12th position, but um, uh, a lot of the other cars in the smaller classes, there really is a tremendous amount of battling going on. And as the race settles down a little more, we'll be able to bring you some of those class positions. Bob Morris, the leader, has a 20 second gap between himself and Peter Brock. Between Brock and Bond, there were two seconds difference. Between Bond and Wigston, six and a half seconds. Between Wigston and Moffat, eight seconds. So that puts... Um, um, 38 and a half seconds between Alan Moffat lying in fifth position to uh, Bob Morris in the lead. Uh, there's 15 seconds further back behind that in sixth position is Bruce Heindhoff in the car which won the event last year and then Warren Cullen just being lapped by Murray Carter. So Carter has now come up having passed O'Brien, Blanchard and now Cullen. He's moved himself up to behind uh, uh, Bruce Heindhoff and only two positions behind Alan Moffat. So a very consistent drive by uh, Murray Carter and I think this is the sort of pattern of the race that Murray Carter runs. He sets himself a certain lap speed, the others might sprint a little bit for a start but Murray Carter just has that same pattern. You could almost set your watch by him and he'll come around every lap at exactly the same time and now that's starting to pay off because uh, he's getting a good run through the traffic. He's not, he's not been held up at all really. He's, uh, he's done very well. The attrition rate was a little high to begin with but the race is starting to set, settle down in a pattern. Uh, Murray Carter has passed a number of cars, as Adrian just said, has moved up through the field. Here he comes down now, as you can see. Uh, he's already been uh, lapped by the race leader who just went through, Bob Morris. There's Murray Carter going through and the race leader. Looking smart, they're out in front and running right away from the pack. Murray Carter, who has been lapped, uh, car number 18, who have followed for the last lap or so in the Brian Wood Ford. Nicely finished car and the motor sounded beautiful in practice here yesterday and uh, he's a driver capable of running the 400 kilometres Bond, without back a in front. Yes, Bond. he's back in the second. Yes. A good move indeed from Colin Bond. He was sitting there playing and uh, the gaps must have opened for Colin Bond and not Peter Brock at the end of the straight. Very nice bit of driving. He just bided his time and just grabbed that lead out of the slipstream, took Peter Brock unawares, who was probably watching another Tirana in the rearview mirror, thinking it was um, the Marlborough Holden dealer team car, but Colin Bond is much, much quicker. He's pulling away a little bit from Peter Brock, and uh, he's just got that run on him as they go up the back straight now. Bob Morris, our race leader. We were listening a moment ago to Bob Watson telling us uh, what he thinks is going on out there, and he's a man who really would know. Bob Morris having not exactly... Uh, an easy run now. He's in the traffic, but he, he seems to be able to pick the gap and the time to move through. But he has a lot of thick traffic ahead of him, and this will slow him up a fraction, only a fraction, because he seems to be finding his way through the, the traffic like a, a knife through butter. Uh, oh, trouble for Moffat. Moffat has uh, blown an outside rim, did it appear? Yes, Coming right down the to the rim. And goes into the uh, to pit area. This will be very interesting to see just how quickly uh, Moffat's crew are set up to uh, change that outside rear wheel because he was being plugging away there, just sitting back in, in fifth or sixth place. And he's already pointing, telling him the problem. He's blown an outside rear tyre. Three minutes, 45 seconds in the pits to Alan Moffat. So he, uh, if 120 would have uh, sufficed, uh, he's uh, extended that by, uh, by two fold. So uh, Alan Moffat rejoins the field and now I would imagine he would be well, well down. And the race still continues with uh, Bobby Morris at number seven out in front. I notice that Alan Grice also has rejoined the field and here comes Grice. He's still got the one little uh, light blinking away there and a most aggressive and forceful character, but a, a great showman is Alan Grice and he's not going to give up this race without a fight. Has no chance whatsoever of winning it outright, but he's back there to try and finish this great 400 kilometre hang 10. Morris has done such a fantastic job to build up this lead in this race. Uh, having a 20 second lead is, is an extremely significant margin. It means that when he comes in to do his pit stop, his, his crew can do everything methodically, carefully, slowly. There's no, you know, they can afford to drop a few seconds on the pit stop because of his good driving to gain that lead. And on the other hand, uh, Brock, uh, his pit crew will have to do a super duper job to gain any, any time at all.
The race is really developing into a bit of a cat and mouse game now. You can imagine what must be running through the minds. Oh, we've got one lost over here. A little bit of a lose by Jim Murcott in the escort. He's out. And uh, I'm afraid uh, that car is no good. We can see Jim Murcott uh, in the cockpit of the car. He's not too well at all. They've called for the uh, for the ambulance officers, the medical crew, and very, very quickly just notice that. That's just tremendous. That race organisation at its best. Well, there's the signal now for Peter Brock in the um, Bill Patterson 3XY uh, Tirana L34 moving into the pits uh, for what will be a very rapid stop. And you can see the mesh there on the, uh, the driver's side. A little trick picked up in Europe undoubtedly by Peter Brock. Uh, to prevent the uh, the arm the driver's arm uh, maybe flying out of the window in the case of a uh, of an accident of any kind. Peter, how's it going? Oh, the tyres are no good, mate. I've got the wrong compound on. They're a bit slippery. Well, uh, Peter, very hard to hear, but uh, he's having problems with his tyres. The uh, track is very very slippery. We thought we had a mo an incident here for a moment. The uh, exhaust pipe was on fire as he came in, but uh, they've extinguished that. The two offside tyres are. Uh, been changed, the fuel is just being uh, replenished now, and Peter Brock uh, sounding just a little disappointed at the performance of uh, the tyres, the car, everything else A OK. Car just about ready to go out now. Yes, he's off, the fuel's in. The engine's fired up and he's away. Back to main commentary now from Kerry Luckins. Well, Jim, I've heard it said before that Brocky drives like he bumps on fire, and this time it was. <laughs> well, and so this enormous dice between Moffat, left of screen, and Peter Brock continues with the uh, run now after this little right-hand kick up the hill towards Marlborough Country. Uh, Moffat a little bit quicker up the hill, and naturally Peter Brock, slightly better handling, catches him on the run down through Goodyear. Two cars worth following through this section. A little bit of traffic ahead of them, not over much. If anything, the disadvantage is with Peter Brock because he has to play it second fiddle all the way through the slower traffic. Closed right up on Alan Moffat. Moffat taking all the road in this uh, pretty hairy looking scramble through the traffic. Peter Brock picked his time well too to be right on his tail as they swing through and prepare now for the run under the bridge and then into the main straight. Peter Brock closed right up, and uh, I think if the other car hadn't been there, would have considered a, an inside passing move. Bob Watson, I think you'd agree with me, uh, watching this race as a driver as you are, you would uh, um, notice the very courteous treatment that the drivers of slower cars are giving to the drivers of the faster cars in overtaking manoeuvres. I certainly do, Max. Um, I, I mentioned this before, that the, uh, the, the drivers of the slower cars really have two jobs. They have to watch out for what's happening ahead of them, and they also have to equally watch out for what's happening behind them. It does make their task quite difficult because when a big car is coming up behind you and you're approaching corner, you're never quite sure whether to hold your line or move over and let him through. You've got a lot more judgments to make. But uh, the, the, obviously the clerk, of course, of this meeting would drum into those uh, the drivers of those slower cars that they must always watch out for the fast ones coming through. And I think really the best rule to follow when you're coming into a corner in a situation like that, if you're in a slower car, you still hold the normal line through the corner because that really is what the driver of the faster car would expect you to do and uh, he will make his own arrangements from there. Whereas if you uh, make, a, uh, make a change and go to the outside or the inside or something like that, uh, you really are placing the faster car at a disadvantage because it's not a great deal between the faster and slower cars, really. No, there certainly isn't. Here's Brock making his big move down the straight. Big slipstream uh, dice here, but not enough room there, passing that, uh, that uh, Alpha uh, 58. And um, Brock was forced to uh, stay behind Moffat, and uh, he missed out on the slipstreaming uh, manoeuvre there. Peter Brock signalling uh, quite furiously there, coming down the S's to, uh, to Alan Moffat to get out of the road and uh, let him go through, because uh, Kerry Luckins has just uh, called in again to say that according to Peter Brock's uh, pit crew there, their man is uh, is in front, so he's pretty anxious to get past Alan Moffat and uh, and clear away because uh, it does appear that the uh, the Falcon is holding him up. There he is, sitting in the slipstream, bearing down the main straight, pulls out now to get the advantage. Moffat will come across too though and uh, and block him off, sitting behind Bo Seaton in the Capri. So uh, Peter Brock will be getting uh, pretty cranky about now, I would think, and uh, trying to get the way around that uh, that big Falcon. Yeah, get out of the road, Alan. I was about to say, if he can get his hand out through the window, through the mesh, he'd be doing a little bit of fist waving, and now he is. 
but Alan Moffat, I think, would remain rather unmoved by that. He claims he's taking the right line at the right time, and it's up to Peter Brock to get past. Through there, there's uh, Alan Moffat, and right tucked in behind him is Peter Brock. Uh, Peter Brock running in third position at the moment. There's Charlie O'Brien, who'd be out of it now. There is Murray Carter, and Wigston should be appearing. But Wigston's car is not appearing, and it looks as though he may be out of sight somewhere. So, more drama, and we've uh, just we've got an official first place, uh, second place. It looks as though we've lost him again. There's Alan Grice appearing, and I think that might be Wigston's be car. Him. Yes, it is. Is it? No, oh. there's the roadway car. So much car number twenty. Out. No, it's. Uh, he must have gone in just the last lap up at Tirana Corner and uh, uh, underneath the big Tirana sign, drive home a winner. Well, he's not going to drive it home at all by the look of it. No. It well, seems to be fine. very much down at the front, uh, Max. Looks as though it could possibly have done a right front tyre or lost a right front wheel. Yes. And uh, it's leaning up against the um, Armco. The, the bodywork is damaged, as you can see. Um, I don't think our camera from uh, the country can pick up far enough back there to actually uh, get a, a shot of the right-hand side of the car because it is leaning right in against the fence. Alan Moffat now, this would put um, uh, Alan Moffat up one more place. It would put Brock up into second position. Uh, so Brock there just uh, tucking in behind Alan Moffat as they go through Shell Corner. He's actually now in second position. That uh, speed around that corner, Shell Corner, is uh, fairly deceptive on camera. They're doing all of 90 miles an hour through there because uh, as they enter the braking area, uh, a couple of hundred yards before the corner, they're doing something in the order of uh, 145, 150 miles an hour, and they uh, they don't knock off a great deal of that, so they're looking at a, around 90 going around that um, that uh, right angle corner, although fortunately it's got a uh, uh, quite a large uh, runoff uh, area there. The uh, Well, not runoff area, but it's a very wide section of the track and they can sweep right out to the edge of it and use all of it. But yes. it's still pretty quick. It is tempting to run wide on that corner, Max, but unfortunately it can lead to disastrous results because once you get off the uh, bitumen and onto the grass, oh. uh, the traction immediately ceases and you have a rather nasty Armco fence waiting for you there. You're immediately doing 200 miles an hour. <laughs> Ten laps to go. There's our race leader, Colin Bond. Something in the order of 40 seconds out in front of, uh, of Peter Brock, but faced with a, uh, a pit stop to take on sufficient fuel just to carry these these last few laps. And what a shame that is too, if uh, if he really does have to do that now. It's a bit unfortunate, of course, that Alan Moffat isn't uh, isn't sort of right with them there in the uh, in the running order uh, to uh, to mix it with them as well because after his effort in um, replacing the car that was burnt out in that disastrous fire at uh, Adelaide three months ago to have uh, built another one up and uh, done so well um, to, uh, to lose that opportunity by a, a flat tyre early in the race costing him some three and a half minutes in the pits it's, uh, it's robbed the event of, uh, of a certain amount of um, exciting finish. Let's hope that we get uh, the final few circuits over without, uh, without any room because that would be catastrophic at this time with the, the drivers who have just run so hard for so long to have rain start to tumble down. Yeah, I don't think there's any real rain up there, uh, Mike. Look at the crowds, the, uh, the clouds are certainly grey, but, uh, and it's cold out there. It's uh, not. <laughs> yes, it is. It is cold. And the coldness actually is going to be a bit of a help because uh, that'll keep the uh, the tyres and the engines uh, uh, cool at this stage, which is, uh, which is a big help because um, uh, the overheating of, uh, of both of those components uh, can spell doom very smartly. Peter Brock full of running as he, uh, as he roars on up the, uh, the back straight again. He's still pulling around the 140 mile an hour mark up the, uh, up the back straight there, heading towards the, uh, the chequered flags. Chequered flag which is waiting only three laps away. Not uh, moving around quite as much on the track now, Bob. He was complaining earlier, of course, that, uh, that he had the wrong compound tyres on and was making the car very slippery to, uh, to handle. But uh, he doesn't seem to be having that problem now. No, I think he's in a comfortable position where he doesn't have to push the car as much as, as he did before. He was trying to make up time on Colin Bond when Bond was leading the race, but uh, after Bond's um, failure at, at the uh, back straight there, Brock's uh, had a fairly easy run. He's got that lap lead on Moffat, although we can see them running together there. He's actually a lap ahead of Moffat, and I think he's just nursing the car along now, making sure that nothing goes wrong. Well, he's shaken Moffat um, in the last two laps, and I think Blanchard, if anything, could be gaining. Blanchard gaining on Moffat? Mm. Uh -huh. He's dropped back. He definitely has. Uh, a couple of laps back, he would have only been probably uh, oh, uh, just a, a 
10 or 15 metres, but he has dropped back. So I think we're almost down to the to the last lap situation for what should be a very interesting finish to the uh, Hang 10 400 kilometre race. There's Graham Blanchard. He is running third at the moment. The race leader is Peter Brock. There's Alan Moffat just ahead of that uh, group there in second place, and the race leader out in front, Peter Brock. We'll have to take a look next time around at the uh, at the main straightaway because. Uh, Laps have run out, and this could be the last lap, or we could be approaching the last lap uh, coming up. Peter Brock about to head on to the, uh, the straightaway now, and he'll get a tremendous reception here. Here's the last lap board coming board. out now. So just watch the, the crowd in the grandstand, because they just absolutely love Peter Brock. They've been cheering him on all afternoon, and any dice at all that uh, has eventuated, the, the crowd here really appreciate the good motor racing in Melbourne. Just look at that. 30,000 people just cheering up. They've done that for every lap of this race today and every lap of the Australian Grand Prix. Just people who appreciate car racing at its best. And Peter Brock has pulled off the first leg of the Grand Slam for the second year in succession. He's won the Hang 10 400 kilometre race here this afternoon at Sandown Park. A great drive indeed to Peter Brock beating Alan Moffat and third place going to Graham Blanchard. Yes, a great uh, consistent drive by, uh, by Peter Brock. Not a thing uh, really went wrong uh, for him right throughout the whole race, even though he complained about having the, uh, the wrong compound tyres when he came in for uh, his scheduled pit stop. Uh, he still got out there and uh, with another couple of tyres on and showed everybody what he's made of. I think full marks too to Alan Moffat for having overcome that, uh, that disastrous, uh, well, could have been disastrous pit stop over three and a half minutes. Uh, when he got the flat tyre early in the event, he, uh, he knuckled down to the job. Uh, got on with it and uh, was rewarded with a fine second place and of course Graham Blanchard uh, who uh, kept out of trouble all day and drove uh, very very consistently and smoothly and he was rewarded uh, with a fine third place.